Get ready for one of our wildest gold sniping adventures yet. Teaming up with Rob Parsons, we'll be packing in three days of supplies to reach a remote river which holds some of the best gold we're yet to find in Tasmania. The country is steep and inhospitable, and reaching the gold is a major hurdle in itself. It's going to be all off track, and any access the old timers used has now been taken claim of by the dense surrounding forests. This will be a huge adventure following in the footsteps of the old miners, searching for alluvial gold in the cracks and crevices of this ancient river. The big question is, will we make it out in one piece, and will we find some of nature's hidden treasure? There's bedrock up there, there's going to be good gold. Morning Rob. Howdy. How are you doing on this fine and dandy morning? Oh, I'm feeling good mate, but the bag is heavy. I'm ready to find a heap of gold. What have you got in there today? Uh, I've got the compressor and a few days worth of food, some camp gear and heaps of sniping gear. Basically a recipe for success. Just starting out our uh, three day adventure. So we'll be out for three days chasing gold. Beautiful remote location in Tassie as per usual. And uh, yeah, we're part way through the journey already. But uh, we're going to drop down into the creek and we'll get to work shortly. We'll set up a base camp and, and uh, start digging for gold. She's all off track. No marked tracks around here. We're just uh, making our way. Luckily we've got some nice open forest to walk through. And a bit of sunshine today which is a nice luxury to have for a change. Might be a bit of spring in the air. Something tells me it's gonna drop in pretty steep. Very steep. I've actually never walked like straight off and down. Yeah, well, who's to say that it's not Better. doable, you know? Mm. Might actually be good running down the end of it. You wanna try? Yeah, we'll go as far as we can. If it gets too steep, we can just drop down before it does. Steep, clippy. Yeah, that's really steep over there. Yeah, it could cut out some of the creek work, eh? We've just dropped into a creek that um, we haven't really explored yet. We're just going to scout it out for a few hundred metres without the packs and see if there's any good bedrock that might be workable ground. Absolutely beautiful in here though. Oh yeah, it might, it might start elevating too much, but at least there'll be bedrock. Oh wow. Little hidden gem. All right, we're gonna, gonna try and get above this waterfall. It means we're gonna have to head up this super steep, slippery, mossy bank and uh, tackle these logs. Hopefully we can get up around there and get a good look at this creek because it's uh, got a lot of potential. We know that where there's waterfalls, it potentially means that there's bedrock because the waterfalls are the hard geology that create, um, that create the falls. There we go. So far so good. You can see just how steep it is. These trees have eroded and fallen in. This is all bedrock under here. It's all stone and the tree just let itself go. A little bit, not a lot. Yeah, it's closed in a bit more, hasn't it? 
bit elevating a bit too much. You never know, it could have just been open. Oh yeah, it could have been a nice big plateau full yeah. of nice open bedrock. I've just pointed out the lumps on this tree. They're actually sassafras, but they've grown really strangely at the base. Let us know why, if you know why. Generally, they're just straight, the old sassafras. Really cool. It's a fairly tedious walk in, multiple kilometers through a narrow creek with fallen trees all along the way. The old timers utilized this area back in the day, but they had a pack horse track into the area. Over a hundred years has passed and unfortunately there's nothing left of that track. Yeah. We're about a kilometre from where we want to be. Got a little bit more to push through. But not too far. Such steep wild country, isn't it? I reckon up there somewhere. Just debating over where the old timers would have had their track in. So minute as well, like for a water race, or they were digging for alluvial. Really has to be like, you wouldn't think they'd get gold out of it. Look at it. You think it was long up here? Little water race wrapping around. Oh yeah, it does. So it's fed out of that creek and it goes into the main river. Goes down to the main creek. Beautiful little water race cut out of the side of the bank. The creek's probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 metres down. Get a bit of an idea of the height we are. But yeah, just wrapping straight through there and along the side. History hidden in these hills everywhere. So we come to the, we come to the end of that water race and we've come to this spot by the river. You can see this big wall here. It's all been washed out. They would have hydraulically sluiced all the gravels on this corner of the river. There's huge workings down in here. And it just continues on right up in there. That looks like a little uh, drift mine, alluvial drift mine. So much history here that never been documented in 150 odd years or more. We're just saying all the gold that we're finding down on the main river could potentially be just all the tailings and the, the gold that they washed out and missed because there's been so much ground moved on this corner. Yeah, they've decimated the place. The place has been ripped apart. Worked out okay right, for us there's though. There's no, um, you know, bottles, there's no metal. Yeah, there's not rubbish. There's no piping. Nothing. It's clean as the whistle this place. You can see right up here above the river that all this alluvial quartz. This is the stuff they worked in these areas. They loved it. Yeah. where we want to find the gold. There's so much gold in this section of the river. So very excited to get back in and see what we might have missed. It's a fair bit of ground, so there should always be a bit more gold to be found. But yeah, Rob's done multiple trips back in here uh, without me and got a good amount of it. Um, this is my second time in, so I'm pretty excited to see if I can get onto a bit.
our camp where we stayed last time which is a series of old workings as well all right this is going to be my little camp spot beautiful flat piece of ground with a really nice view just going to set up our tents and uh, get set up before we get into it gives us a chance to rest a little bit too it was a pretty brutal walk in and Rob's already in the drink he's gone off with the compressor so he's gonna go do some of the deeper pools and uh, I'll just be doing the usual scratching around the shallows I'll be cherry picking some of the uh, better looking bedrock and uh, hopefully there's a little bit around that we've missed in the past few trips and we can get on to some good gold had to stitch a few new pockets onto me weddy uh, I usually keep my phone in there got my torch in that one and the uh, snuffer bottle goes in one of the leg pockets as well the old ones were pretty worn out gonna be working pretty close to camp we're lucky enough that uh, we've got a spot that we can set up camp which is close to where the gold is we don't have to trek too far on the river itself but if we're not doing all that good we might move up and down stream a little bit and try a few different spots out This little cherry picker snuffers out, that's a good sign. I uh, didn't help myself, I stuck my head down, I thought I don't think I've tried it here. Yeah. And um, as you can see, these little rough parts. Yeah. yeah. Bloody awesome gold here. It's got good gold in it. Yeah, a couple wow. of little chunky bits. Nice. Wonder the colour just like that, eh? No nugs yet, but a good picker. Got nice. a nice picker. Yeah, nice. Beautiful river, laden with gold. Rob was just saying the water's freezing today. His hands are feeling it. Magnetite and ironstone and heaps of it. It's always a good indicator for gold in Tasmania. In fact, there was so much of it sitting around in the base of the river that it was extremely difficult to work through the material. We got gold. It was what I was expecting. I knew that once I'd got under all that gravel and that heavy ironstone, there'd be gold underneath. It was just a matter of doing the work. This river has heaps of workable ground and there's nice little pockets everywhere. And once you've cleaned them out, there's always a good bit of gold to be found underneath. A 
thought I'd better go check on the man on the machine and see how he was doing in the deeper water. How's the deeper pool work now, old boy? Pretty good. Yeah? Good on door? Yeah. There's, uh, there's gold here and it's not as frequent as up there. Yep. But when you get it, they're little like pickers and oh, no. yeah, bigger bits. Thick bits. Yeah. Yeah, so wicked. I'm doing all right. I've probably got oh, four or five grams, maybe. Wow. Yeah. So there's gold all the way down here, which is good then. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, I've only sat my gear there and yeah. basically put my head down. And a lot of this is quite smooth, but just yep. here it's a bit You coarse. get those little cavities where yeah, there's gold hiding. Yeah. Where you bust them open with the small crevice and hook. Yeah. Um, now, this pool here is pretty much where I hit a lot of gold last time I was here. So I'm going to focus my time in here. When I was here last, I actually dug up an old pickaxe head that the old timers have been using. It was a big rusty old thing, it was sitting down in the bedrock and uh, literally underneath it as I as I pulled it out and worked down to the bedrock underneath there was little nuggets underneath, it was a really cool experience. But it looks like the last flood, I think I sat it just up here somewhere, it looks like the floods washed it back into the river. I really wanted to show you guys. This location was incredible. As soon as I jumped in and started breaking open bedrock, there was gold hiding underneath. And the clay and the geology in this spot was like no other. This one, a beautiful little ironstone covered nugget. There were some beautiful pieces hiding away in this location. Well, making our way back to camp. Pretty good day. Nothing outstanding for me today, but uh, just hang in there till tomorrow, Levi. Definitely a good amount of gold, so I'm not complaining. I'm going to save a bit of energy for tomorrow. Got a big day tomorrow. That'll be our biggest, I guess. this one out bit of gold in there I thought you said you were struggling I was struggling you got 15 grams there that's better than I thought actually I play it down a bit, don't I? You do. Cheeky. <laughs> what the nah, man? I think it's just the black sand making it look decent, isn't it? That's a pretty good spread. It's not 15 grams though. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's you reckon? Yeah. 15? Yeah. Oh, I'll be happy if I've got 15. Mm. Yeah, that'll be 15. Good right. job, mate. Thanks. Better than I thought, so that's always a bonus. See how dark that is? Yeah. What was that? All the clay? Well, and all yeah, that black stuff in the base so. of the crevices. Yeah. Muddy, grey, decomposed crap. Well, the overburden's impressive, if anything. Yeah. It's what happens when you use that mega snuffer. Yeah, they, you can suck, you get a bit confident, don't you? You suck everything up. Right, oh, no. let's have a look at her. Oh yeah, killed it buddy. Here 
get some nice chunky bits. Yeah, there was a few fat ones in there. Fat pickers. Pull that one back. He's a big one. Yeah, might There's be point eight. Oh. Drop it in the river. Dirty one. Yeah. Actually, it's probably point six. Yeah. Point six seven. Beautiful. Yeah, bloody awesome day. She's still in here. Yeah, there's no, it's not really slowing because I mean that wasn't as long as the other days we've done here. So, see that bit there? We would have done better if we had a couple more hours. That's cool. That's that's a different deposit. Yeah, real that, shiny. That's from the outside of this geology zone. Yep. Good day all round, folks. Go get by that fire and get some tucker. better. I love chasing the gold but uh, it's um, definitely nice to be dry for a change. Hopefully tomorrow is just as good if not better and see what tomorrow brings eh? Naughty night folks. exciting part <laughs> putting the boots back on yeah yeah it's not so bad these ones are much better still alive mate you still alive oh I'm just to have a lot of that yeah all right I slept very cold last night it well, was not very it cold but Chilly. Yeah, it was real cold, eh? Mm. Yeah, I could feel it on my back all night and it just wasn't real comfy. Figured you mustn't have slept all that good because it's not like me to be up first. Because he's a dad now, you see. He hasn't had as much sleep lately, the poor fella. That happens. <clears throat> so, because it is so cold, getting tired of this big torch I keep it under my hood I tuck it under the hood and it lets all the cold water in I'm just wondering maybe I can get away if I can attach this little one it's another Olight but it's very powerful so I'm hoping I can strap it to my strap it to my snorkel mask and snorkel small little beast but it might do the trick the tape's so cold it's just tearing in half oh wow what do you reckon I reckon that's gonna work and twist it on like that which uh, makes it waterproof I think once it's sealed <laughs> yeah. And I think that made all the difference last night. Was it cold? Well, I wasn't cold, but I just was only just comfortable, you know? Yeah. I wasn't... I had to be careful about how much air I let in, mm. if I had my beanie on. Yep. If I was, you know, if I had too much air pockets in the sleeping bag. All those things made a difference last night. And Try and work all the ground from down there to up here. Yeah, right. But if it's really fizzling on me, I'll probably 
shoot up here somewhere. I, I was, I'm a bit curious about this corner where I found that real shiny stuff, eh? Mm. On that corner, so I would like some more of that stuff. Well, I reckon I'll head down. I reckon I'll head downstream. We're gonna go on the search downstream. Yeah. Okay. Smaller stuff, but the compressor will allow me to get mm. up through some untouched areas. Yeah. Got a crevice down here. We're camped literally just up on the bank. Uh, Rob comes down here to do his sat phone to get reception, and I collect my water here. But there's this perfect textbook crevice, and we've just been looking at it for all the times we've been down here. So we're gonna get the pan out. It's only a little little fella. Uh, the crevice and hook, and we're gonna see if we can find some gold in it. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's Black sands, you First pan and there's a flake of gold in there, it's just surface gravels. Look at that. Look at all the black sand. You know you do a lot of sniping when you go and you start doing this <laughs> out of the water line. So that pan's given us a couple of little chunkier little bits. Not sure if you can see it. Oh yeah, nice little oh, you, another one. pokery bit. Yep. All right, we're gonna leave a bit for next time we're here. So we've done about two thirds of it. It's time to get in the wetsuits and uh, go chase some real stuff. Let's go get some gold. Come on, lad. It's off to freeze we go. See ya, mate. Bye, Levi. Rob's going to work this beautiful deep hole here. This was one of his mega honey holes when he first got to this location. He's going to try this deeper stuff up the front, which we haven't been able to really access. Good luck, mate. Thanks, mate. I'll come and visit you soon. Yeah, bring me a few McGinties. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go, it was absolutely correct, and it all starts with the shovel. Making my way down to the lower bedrock in a hope that it's more coarse and that it's got cracks and crevices for gold to trap. You can see all the magnetite and ironstone, these are all the chocolate looking rocks on the bottom of the river, and it's the last layer of overburden that you have to remove before you get to the gold beneath. This river tends to break the rules a little. Because there's so much of this magnetite, the gold gets trapped underneath. And even though this piece of gold is in a crack, quite often I would find pieces on flat bedrock just underneath. Gold will generally sit right up the back of the drop-off points. It's important to be super thorough in these areas because it's very easy to miss gold. As mentioned, a massive cluster of gold right at the back. Nice little cluster in there.
Nice little picker down in there. It became apparent that this section of river that I had chosen for the morning was very rich and although I'd worked here on my last trip in, the lack of time meant that there was a lot left to be found. It was fast becoming a good morning and I was literally finding hundreds of pieces of gold. It's amazing the uh, tiny little pockets that just have clusters of gold everywhere. Have a little look at this. There are only small fault lines in the bedrock, but they had a heap of chunky gold caught up inside. Every little section was just packed full of gold. There can't be that much gold in there. That's Insane! It's been like two grams of gold in this little pocket. Check this out. You see this uh, rounded piece of bedrock? There's a little boil hole down in underneath. I've cleaned the gravels out and checked the amount of gold just sitting in this boil hole. It is insane. This boil hole had the most ridiculous amount of gold sitting under the magnetite in the bottom. incredible amount of gold and if I was to guess it would probably be around 5 to 10 grams in one boil hole. I started working a second boil hole nearby to see if I could get a similar result. Not quite as rich, but still an insane amount. If you've enjoyed today's video, remember to hit that like button, drop some comments below and share it about with someone you know that might enjoy it as well. After two to three insane hours on the gold, it was time to take a quick break and put some food in. I find that when I eat, it puts the energy back in my body and it helps to combat the cold. After I'd had my lunch, I moved further upstream to a pool with some deeper water and I came across a huge quartz stringer running through the bedrock with a good drop off point behind it. And in this location, it didn't take long and I started to find small nuggets. Oh, 
loaded. Whew. Nuts. gold had been incredible. I had stayed on the gold all day, which is extremely rare, and some of the biggest nuggets were found right at the end of the day. the biggest piece of the day. Big flat long bit. The funny thing is I think I've been over this ground before but it was just a really tight packed tiny little crack that I must have overlooked and that come out of it. That is just one big chunk of metal. That is so heavy for the size of it. Been working in this deep pool here for over an hour now and uh, it's been really consistent. But then this one showed up. It looks so much bigger underwater, <laughs> I guess because I haven't seen a decent nugget the last couple of days. It's all been good gold, but uh, not quite that big. So yeah, it might be a gram or just over. As I continued on in the crevice, literally just a few seconds in and I found another. Now late in the day, I finished off the crevice I was working and it was back to camp to get warmed up. Well, I'm done for the day. Totally freezing now, getting quite late, but uh, what a ripper of a day. The gold was uh, really consistent for me. Fire! I could see smoke up in the valley and I thought, oh yeah, it's got me a fire going. Yeah. <sighs> this is a good one too. <sighs> nice and warm. Thanks mate. Up against the wall. Yeah, up against the wall under those logs. So like all those logs began shifting and I was able to push them the other way. Yeah right. Okay. This is uh this is from earlier today. I had to empty the snuffer because it's starting to blow back out, but it's been a mad day. First half of the day. Yeah. Solid. Let's tip the rest in on the other side. See how we went just then. Yeah, you've smashed it today. It was 
bigger bits too. Much water. That was the nugget. That's beautiful. Yeah, nice little piece. Yep. Good for this one. And there's the spessy one. See how it's, I think it's quartz, maybe it's ironstone. You know what you're really chasing, those yeah. fat mini nugs. And they just don't exist really downstream. I mean, they're a bit rare. That nugget's nice. Yeah, it's a ripper. I thought it, when I first seen it, because I hadn't seen anything big all day. Yep. But it was like a two grammar, or three grammar even. Oh, that fire's so good, I can feel it. Yeah, maybe an ounce, and it does look good now, doesn't it? Yeah, that's got to be an ounce. I just felt good today, other than the cold killing me, but mm. when I got up this morning, I'd had a pretty good sleep and just ready to get to it. Yeah, nice. Good job, mate. Thanks, man. Yeah. yesterday that's Oliver yeah. definitely worth coming down here Heck yeah. some wicked bits in there chunky yeah. bits nugs nugs Nugs. pickers flakes mm. good combination yeah. happy man yeah look we didn't come down here to break records, we just come down here to have a good good time and good camp and clean. maybe have a scratchy around if we could find the time. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be that interesting. This is bloody insane. This is like a whole new experience out here. Tonight. And it keeps changing, like it's green and then it will be blue. It's the final send off for this river. It's done us pretty well. Mm. Now we got a magic fire. It's supposed to burn coloured like that for half an hour. It's not coloured like that. He won't right now, surely. No. Things a piece of shit. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it's massive. It's like bigger than a walking stick, and I well, hate it. Weighs stick. nothing. He almost made a javelin stick tripod for his GoPro. He's not impressed with it, but I really like it. It's awesome out here in the forest because it just sticks straight into the ground really easily. You can turn it on any angle you want it. Lightweight, ultimate selfie pole for extended viewing. As the night drew to a close, we had some good laughs and plenty more attacks on each other. And then it was off to bed to get a good night's rest for our big walk out the next day. Another trip done and dusted, you reckon? Yep, a successful one at that. Hell of a lot of gold. More gold than I ever found in my life. In one river. Done all right, eh, mate? Bloody good job, mate. <laughs> So I just want to let you guys know my eldest son Will has uh, just released another video on his channel. Uh, his channel name is Will Triffitt 
Uh, he's a mad keen fisherman and he's done a really good job of this video and I know you guys will enjoy it. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy his. So if it's something you want to check out, uh, I'll drop a link in the description below. Rob and I had a fantastic trip, three days out in the bush and a phenomenal amount of gold. I'm going to show you guys that now. Let's have a look at it and uh, we'll see what it weighs in it. It's a ridiculous amount of gold for three days and it's chunky all of it's chunky like it's small but thick quite unique covered in ironstone These were the ones that I'd probably class as nuggets. Nice pieces. All right, we'll drop the bigger pieces on first. Just under half a gram. 0.49. This one I'm gonna go 0.8. Bit lighter, 0.65. Spessy looking one, maybe 0 0.8. 1.08. .08. And the one that I believe could be the biggest, I'm gonna say 1.4. Or 1.27. And now we're gonna drop all that on. Okay, and now that grand finale, here we go. I know the weight, but you guys hang in there. Fit on there. Got a whopping 37.7 just about. Insane. Very, very grateful and very happy with the result. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. So uh, yeah, remember to give it a like, drop a comment and share it about with someone that you think might enjoy it. And uh, until the next one, happy hunting and we'll see you all then.